Hey y'all, it's me, Ren. Back again for another adventure. Uh, we had an exciting day last time because uh, due to a series of terrible mistakes, I uh, ended up taking a corpse to prom, which is of course one of the special endings here. Hello, my love, my beautiful stinky corpse giving me finger guns for no reason at all. Definitely not because you're duct taped to the ceiling. Oh, did he come get me in a minivan? That's cute. Or is that a pickup truck with a... Oh, it's a hearse. Of course it's a hearse. Okay, I get it. <laughs> okay, so that's... We forgot to look at what we unlocked at the end of the last stream because I was in a hurry to get out of here because I had to go to the bathroom. <clears throat> All right, but let's look at our let's look at our Polaroids and remind ourselves uh, if we've dated anyone with blue successfully yet. Because I don't think we have. Yeah, we haven't. We've just failed, 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 and then we dated a corpse. So I guess that says a lot about me. All right. Well, let's go back and let's see if we can actually date someone that's alive. You know, we, we took our corpse training wheels off and now we're ready to go. We're gonna do one player short game first term. Ah, uh, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who am I? Uh, let's see. We are gonna be a custom name. Blurin. 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 Blur. I don't know. It's fun to say Blurin. Blurin. I'm a they. Okay. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who calm for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, 400 and something. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Vera Oberlin, 23. A mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I just saw that Liam's book was called The Life and Death of the Man Bun. Huh. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, TM. We'll throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start. Aw, oh, hearts. I love my ATM. Adam? You think you'd call him Adam? Which inanimate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided you went criminally insane? A human-sized pillow depicting a character created by myself. As a matter of fact, I have all the needed paperwork and I'm only waiting for the conservative, narrow-minded laws of our country to finally step forward into waifu and husbando territory, as was clearly intended by God. A dildo. Duh. 
An ATM. Sugar baby life, here I come. Yeah, we're going with that, because we want, I want some muns, huns. Gotta get that mad cash. Yeah, so wealthy. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? No one can make me fuck an animal. If I fucked an animal, it'd be of my own free will. As a matter of fact, I already have fucked an animal, so the joke's on you, pal. A purebred horse. At least I can keep his semen and sell it. It's worth a lot. Who said there was no silver lining to bestiality? Oh, I didn't highlight it. A dolphin. They're the only other animal that fucks just for pleasure, so at least we can both do our best to have a good time, right? All right, we're gonna get more cash monies. More cash monies. All right, if I were an ice, if you were an ice cream, I'm not involved in this. Let's keep a layer of anonymity. If you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? I don't think I've gotten this one before. Rainbows and gummy bears, tequila and Coke, winky face, success. Double, double creme de la rire and meringue. Meat. Spicy chocolate. No. Chocolate on fire. All right, we're going with success. Yeah, Vera. I'm coming for you, babe. Oh, that sounded weird. I wish, I wish to date you, ma'am. Miss, my dear. Blink blonk, blink blink, blink blonk. Blink bonk, blink bonk. Yahoo! Oh, my kibbits have been performing nicely as well. That's good. All right, what have we got here? Ah, I got lots of money. I need a little bit of creativity, a little bit of charm. Let's, uh, let's hit creativity first. Three muskets. This is a beautiful horse. It's a beautiful horse. It's exactly what horses look like. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two creativity. Later, you see Miranda and Vera cornered by the wolf pack, who are watching them like a pack of wolves. Da, 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 da. How would one of you ladies like to go on a date tonight with the hottest dogs ever to not be literal hot dogs? I've been getting this, this one a lot lately. I wouldn't at all. This is not at all how I like my courtships to begin. Where are the jewels? Where are the flowers? Where are the bloody heads of my enemies? Oh man, we'll show you courtship. On the court. When we win. On the court. At sports. We'll show you sportship courtship. Every time I think the guys at this school can't get any dumber. Oh, I get it. You're both shy. Don't worry. Our bucks are worth in our bites. Except when we're doing sports. Because then we bring it. Yeah. But if uh, neither of you have the confidence to say which one wants to go out with us tonight, we can just choose for you. Yikes. Like, they're relatively well-intentioned, but you should definitely step in and save one of them. Tonight, Miranda can't. I have two tickets to Cirque du la Mer's underwater show. You don't want to go out with Vera. I hear her snakes have syphilis. All right, let's see. Yeah, so bold. Just barely bold enough, I would say. Yes, that's exactly right. They do have syphilis. Poison flows through my very veins. I am a powerful, dangerous bad bitch. Fear me, you puny little mortals. And fear my ability to destroy you effortlessly. Effortlessly? It's not right. Uh, you, you know what? I think we just heard Coach call on us. We need to go uh, practice not getting STDs.
With that, the wolf pack is out. <laughs> Vera, I'm so sorry to hear about your illness. I had no idea. Mary, my snakes don't actually have syphilis. We were just giving them the slip. Oh no, you started something awful, but at least it worked. You gained two smarts and one boldness. So smart. Okay. I'm gonna go over here and have lunch with Coach. You're hoping to enjoy your meal in peace, but Coach seems to have a different idea. What's this? Eating regular food? Again? Fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, blood. These are all parts of a complete lunch, sure. But you're forgetting the most important food group of all. Dietary supplements. Don't you worry now. Old Coach never goes anywhere without some emergency vitamins. Here, take your pick. It would be rude to turn him down, and who knows? Maybe you'll gain some benefit after all. Coach holds out two pill bottles. Palomino Gold 25 Horse Supplement for a shiny coat and luxurious mane. A completely black bottle emblazoned with a Chinese character for party time. Uh, let's go with charm. Let's get our charm up. Let's be shiny coat and turn into a horse. You swallow the entire bottle of horse supplements because it's no use committing to a bad decision halfway. I love Coach's nails. I wonder if he gets manicures. Suddenly, you feel your hair growing silkier, even though you're not sure you had hair to begin with. Something seems different about you. For some reason, I want to stroke your mane and feed you sugar lumps. It's probably because of how healthy you are from all the vitamins. So like I always say, when life gives you vitamins, take them, no matter what the label on the bottle says. You're inclined to agree. Also, some sugar lumps do sound good. Your classmates all gather around to comment on what a pretty pony you are. Everyone loves a horse or a high school student slowly turning into one. You gain four charm. Yeah, I'm so charming. <clears throat> oh, my allergies are bad this morning. I've got a lot of crud in my nose. Let's see. What are we gonna do? We can't go to the library. Let's go have some fun and get our fun up a little bit. Yeah, bump it. Bump it. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. You notice Vera showing off an elaborate new necklace to Miranda. They're the crown jewels of Lemuria. My family acquired them in a cutthroat business merger. Do you like them? Oh yes, very much. Such a shame about the Lemurian royal family, though. What, that they're all dead at the hands of their own servants? No, oh, no, that was unavoidable once the true tragedy had taken place. They were no longer loved by their subjects. Feared, you mean? Oh, no, fear is scary. Love is what matters. I could not disagree more. You there, settle this dispute for us. What is the best way to let people know how powerful you are? Sneer. Sneer. Oh, her, her nails match her lip gloss. Is that a thing people do? I don't know. Buy their houses, burn them down, then replace them with a water park? You don't need to convince everyone, anyone. Just make everyone who loves, doesn't love you disappear. That sentence was hard for some reason. It just went everywhere. Okay. I feel like... Yeah, let's just do this. So fun. Why is it... Oh, water parks. Okay. Ah, yes. A tactic I've used successfully many times in the past. The best part is that when you build enough water parks, no one even goes to most of them. 
Meaning that you burn down your victims' houses for absolutely no constructive purposes. Victims? Don't you mean subjects? Same thing, darling. Same thing. Now you understand why so many new water parks have been opening up lately. You gained two smarts and one fun. Ding dong, bing bong. Let's see here. Sorry, I had to pause for a moment to look at a cute cat thing because she's Fargo's in her little bed. In her little bed. It's great. Oh yeah, I was talking about you. She gave me a little brrr. Okay, what am I doing here? Where am I going? What do I want to do? Should we go to the bathroom? We haven't gone to the bathroom in a while. It's good to keep regular. Yeah, getting high off electricity in the bathroom. Zzzz. Nice. That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch their world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. So bold. Vera is trying to teach... Oh, I haven't gotten this one before. I don't know what this is. Vera is trying to teach you and Scott how to play craps when you hear an all-too-familiar howl. Guys, guys, the wolf pack is here. It's my family and teammates, the wolf pack. Yes, wonderful. I'm sure they're here to share their latest intellectual achievements. Yo, what up, my dogs? Oh, I clicked away from it. Yo, what up, my dogs? Hey, guys. Vera was just... That's cool, that's cool. So guess who's got a hot date lined up for this weekend? Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me I got this. Is it... Is, is it you? Bingo, broski! Turns out online dating's super easy! Yeah, the secret is just be hot, like me. Sure, sure! Or you could just use an actor's face and body instead of your own face and uh, body on the dating website. That's what we did. Aren't you worried about the potential consequences of that? Like, what's gonna happen when your date realizes you're not actually a handsome mixed strong pex? How did you know which actor we chose? And what are we gonna do? That's a very real problem that we never considered. Luckily, you're an expert at online dating and at lying. You share with them the perfect solution. I have never seen this one before. Spend the entire date inside a cardboard refrigerator box covered in question marks? Mystery is alluring. Just be yourself, but first tear off the actor's face and wear it so you'll have the same face as the actor. Oh, Grace. Um... This seems fairly bold. This could be creativity. Blurrin. Got distracted by seeing Blurrin. Ah. Uh, gosh. And I want to beef it. Ah. Uh, this, this is the one that I want to do, though. I want to do the cardboard refrigerator box. So I'm just going to commit. Fingers crossed, everybody. I hope it's not creativity. It was creativity. Okay. No, that's... That's, that's how, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. We can even write handsome McStrong packs on the box to make it extra convincing. But, uh, how are y'all gonna fit inside one big box? Oh, uh, that's easy, Scott. We're athletes. We'll just sit on each other's shoulders. Oh, thank goodness. The one flaw in this plan cleverly solved. The wolf pack happily goes off to find a cardboard box, and you congratulate yourself on a job well done. But the next morning, you wake up to a troubling newspaper headline. Internet date ruined by stack of wolves wearing cardboard box. 
Scott and Vera will never let you hear the end of this. You lose two smarts and one creativity. What was that? I've never seen that one before. Time to get our pump up. You're eating your lunch, minding your own business, when someone under your table pokes your business. Rude. Psst. Hey, how would you like to turn against your friends in exchange for forbidden knowledge? Betraying your friends sounds bad, but forbidden knowledge sounds dope. You listen to her pitch. Basically, I just need you to tell me Damien and Liam's hidden weaknesses. What is her voice today? It's because of my allergies. Well, just, it's all good. For like totally innocent reasons. And in exchange, I'll teach you one of my most secret slayer techniques. What's that you say? You'll totally do it and I can trust what you say 100%? Great. Which technique do you want to learn? How to be the protagonist of any scene? How to punch a dude so hard his head explodes? Well, shoot. I've got both of those pretty pumped up, but let's go with, uh... Let's go with charm. It's important to be charming. How do I be the protagonist? You tell the Slayer that Liam's weakness is being ignored and Damien's weakness is ice cream cake. Really? But that's so simple. I'll bury them in indifference and frozen treats respectively. Oh, you want to know my secret technique? It's simple. Just act like you're entitled to everyone's love and affection and constantly make decisions that endanger you and your friends. Whoa, that's it? But you already do those things, like, all the time. Is it possible that uh, you've been the protagonist all along? This discovery gives you newfound confidence, which you used to punch the Slayer in the neck and steal her shoes. As the protagonist of your own life, you gain four charm. Oh, I've got that one line in my face from, like, somewhere behind my nose up through part of my eye and then into my forehead that's just like hi your allergies are bad so we're gonna make this little this this duct or whatever hurt great y'all want to hear about it i know okay uh create i need to bump my creativity she's in the bathroom so we can go there without without an issue star that day while rehearsing for the class play you aren't especially good nor inspired for once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you have trouble conveying your point in a discussion, so you decide to convey it through music. You start singing, and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain two creativity. Later, you see Vera cackling to herself in the hallway, which is whatever, but you might as well find out why. Just, uh, just practicing my prom queen and acceptance speech in my mind. It's not like the title bears any meaning whatsoever, of course, and I really do consider the whole thing beneath me. However, considering how much meaning other girls put on it, I can't risk some uppity bitch thinking she's better than I am. Plus, it's not bad branding, either. I could see using a victory to start a line of successful prom queen accessories, guaranteed to get you the win. Perfect prom shoes, the right makeup, fancy knives to take out your opponents. Speaking of which, I assume this goes without saying, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'll be doing a blood ritual to ensure my win. I still haven't found the exact details yet, but I'm optimistic that at least some of the items will be found in the shop. The only question is where exactly I can find the details for a proper blood win ritual. Winchual. Why don't we ask the coven? They're witches. They should know all about blood magic. Literally just search the internet? Like that's literally what it's there for? Okay, we've done this. Ooh, we've done this bottom one before. So let's see about this top one. So charming. Oh, we charm them. Of course, I know those basic bitches would come in handy one day. Actually, I really didn't. I always thought they were pretty useless, but I'm never mad to be proven wrong when it serves me. Using the skills you gain during the extra credit summoning seminar, you call forth the coven. 
What is it now? Is there some emergency? Is the world in need of saving? Of course not. The world is the worst. Why would I ever want to save it? No, I just want to be prom queen and I need some blood magic to guarantee my victory. And I figured you three could do something productive for once. What do you mean for once? We're the ones constantly saving you from destruction. We're the ones who... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just tell me how to cheat my way into being prom queen. Or I'll start a rumor that you're just a mega swarm of bees in three people suits. Why would that... Ugh, whatever. Here's what you'll need for the ritual. The blood of a former prom queen, the tongue of a goat, and the earrings of an ancient goddess. But good luck getting those. Thanks. When I need your opinion, I'll ask for it. You, you did ask. And now you answered so you can leave. In a puff of aggravated smoke, the coven disappears. Let's split up. You check the shop. I'll grab a goat and meet you in the bathrooms when you're done. Well, guess you're involved in some blood magic now. Sounds fun. You gain two fun and one charm. I don't have enough juice to finish that one. Because I need to go to the shop and get a tampon. But there's still two more things left. And as long as I don't buy the tampon, then I won't trigger it. That's nice, because then I don't have to worry about beefing a, a turn and losing stuff. So let's go to the auditorium. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. But you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. And it's marvelous. Somehow it enhances the pathos of the play in unexpected ways. And that's saying something, since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. You gain two creativity. As you walk down the hallway trying to beat a level of bone crush on your phone, you run smack into Vera, also engrossed in her phone. Sure, feel free to read over my shoulder. You wouldn't understand the charts anyway. Miranda's been mouthing off about being a princess again, if that's so amazing. She's a princess underwater. You know what's underwater? Sea slugs and fish shit. You know what's not underwater? This school. Why should birthright matter when there are so many other factors that determine a person's worth? Their beauty, their cruelty, and their business sense. And using all these factors, I've divided this school into cools and uncools. Now I just need to find a way to reinforce the superiority of the cools over the uncools. Uncool students should have to carry cool students from class to class on chaises. Rotting squid should be thrown at unschool students to remind them how uncool they are. I don't know what any of these are. I don't want to throw rotting squid at anybody just yet, so let's try this one. So creative. Good, good, good. I do worry about my shoes getting scuffed up getting from class to class. These cockatrice scale pumps cost $2,000. Not 2000 money? What am I supposed to do, walk in them? Of course, the uncool student should pay for the chaise out of pocket. Hmm. Maybe I'll go into the chaise business, exploit my fellow students, advance the cools, and turn a profit. A few days later, you see Vera being carried from Apparitions 3 to AP Fearmongering on a beautiful studded couch. You notice there's a tag on it that says Oberlin Upholstery, and Vera's counting her money. Sweet. You gain two money as a royalty for your idea, and one smarts. I'm very impressed that she actually paid me royalties. I guess when it comes to business dealings, she's pretty spot on. Dun, 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 dun. Where am I going? What? I don't remember the coven eating lunch with them before. Nope, we're not doing that. We just gotta 
let's stick with Coach for right now. You're desperately trying to enjoy your meal in peace, but Coach insists on striking up a conversation. Hey there, bud. What you drinking? What? Milk? That's it? That's hardly a drink at all. Everybody knows the drink is the backbone of a balanced lunch. What would be be without backbones? I don't know. My doctor yells at me whenever I try to find out. But enough about me. Let's get you juiced. You can have sports sauce or muscle juice. Which will it be? Both or whiskey? Uh, whiskey's fun. I don't really need that. Both is bold. Let's go for that. Both? Both? What a bold choice. Especially considering that these two liquids combined create another highly explosive liquid. And, but you know what they say. You can't make an omelet without drinking a few explosives. Bottoms up. You grab the two bottles from Coach and squirt them into your mouth. Cowabunga. Luckily, your stomach is rated as a class 5 atomic bomb shelter, so you avoid any negative consequences. When your classmates see that you are literally willing to drink a blom... Bloms. You're literally willing to drink a bomb for no reason, though they ceremonially, uh, ceremonially award you for boldness. Just add a few more lilies to that. All right, well, what do we want to do? Do we want to be a little smarter or a little more creative? Let's be a little more creative. We've been to the auditorium a lot. Let's keep that up. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses, to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a valid currency or stat in this game. Anyway, you check your converter app to see if this could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet, you gain plus two creativity. God damn, I signed up for this play because I knew I could fill out these costumes like a goddess. But now I'm starting to think I might actually hate acting, which is weird because I love lying. That's your fucking problem, Vera. You shouldn't be lying. You should be living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. Duh. What? You don't think I about you don't think I know about acting? I've hidden depths, you know. My life isn't all punching and arson. It's just mostly those things. Look, you're an assassin, right? You just need to think of the best reason to assassinate someone. Oh, you know exactly what that is. Because nobody's paying you not to. No reason at all. Everyone is rotten and deserves to die. Well, shoot. I don't know what either of these are. But let's go with this top one. Because I feel like that jives more with Vera's whole business. Oh, fruitcake. Honey, I've run protections racket before, and that's not how it works. What, am I supposed to kill every single person who isn't paying me not to kill them? That's at least 12 people, maybe even 13. I simply can't be bothered. Hmm, maybe the best reason to assassinate someone is if they jump in with shitty answers to questions that weren't even directed at them. Hey, that's a great reason to kill someone. Well, looks like that's your cue to exit. You lose face and you lose two boldness and one creativity. Oh, I don't think I'm going to make it. We'll see. We'll see, hey, Vera. Oh, no. Oh, no. Nobody pay attention to that. I thought since I muted my phone, my timer wouldn't beep out loud, but whatever. It's perfect timing. Look at this. I'm wrapping it up just as we go. Ask Vera to the prom? Yes. When? No. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. And she's not going to say yes. You're asking me to go to the prom with you. Sorry, I'm focusing on my career. My career and not dating losers like you. Bye, loser. 
Your failure made you so despised by society that you were exiled to the wilds where you joined a pack of wolves. Still, you were so bad at social interaction that you also failed at getting a date for wolf prom. Damn. Best at hissing. Yeah, you are, girl. <sighs> Gosh. Blue is not having a lot of luck with dating. Oh, well. It is what it is, y'all. I gotta fail sometimes, and I guess... I guess all those times are with Blue. So we'll just keep it going. Those three weeks were the... Were... Huh? What's going on? Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Vera built the Oberlin Empire into endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies. It's known that they're also into lots of sketchy business. But no one does anything about it. I mean, who the hell would try to stop Vera Oberlin? Miranda got a job being princess of her kingdom, which was actually kind of her job already. Well, you don't see her complaining about it. Scott became an athlete. I don't know why this whole time I've been saying athlete. I don't know why. It's because of Scott, I'm sure. Not so long ago, he won a prestigious national award for being the best at doing sports. Good for you. For those three weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Ready to start failing. Over and over and over again. Always failing. I haven't succeeded. I dated a corpse. I've been playing blue for like a week and a half now, and I, I have successfully dated a corpse. I didn't even unlock any new images. Y'all, listen. We're going to get this. Blue is going to get to go to prom with a live person. Come back. Join me next time for another adventure. I'm Ren. Have a good day. I, that was, I don't know what that was. Bye, everybody. Be safe. Take care of yourselves.